International politics is about war, peace, and world order. We ask questions about the causes and impediments to war, peace, and world order. We begin by establishing a way to organize our thoughts about war and peace. With this framework in place, we can carefully examine the causes and consequences of war. Why do wars happen? Are there winner and losers in war? Or is everyone a loser? We can think of war and peace as a continuum. During peaceful times, government can think about policies that will foster trade, establish laws and norms of conduct to secure continued peace, encourage respect for human rights and civil liberties, pursue peace and order through international organizations. Between the extremes of war and peace, leaders and states pursue world order. Rewards and punishment, development and nation building, alliances and cartel are used to structure interactions and policy questions. Most explanations of international politics view states as the central players and domestic politics as unimportant. This leads us to international politics as convoluted and to make errors in promoting policy solutions. Decision makers instead are the central players. Their actions are shaped by the domestic politics of their country. For example, domestic constraints help us understand why American presidents and other democratic leaders have often failed to advance democracy and freedom in the world. Leaders do what they believe is best to advance their personal interests. Sometimes leaders' interests coincide with the citizenry's national interests, and sometimes they differ. Understanding the difference between leader interests and the national interests is central to understanding international politics. Understanding international politics requires we make some assumptions about how leaders choose actions and objectives. The assumption of individual decision makers' rationality is standard practice. It allows us to tie individual objectives to individual actions. We treat individual decision makers rather than whole states as rational. Rationality is often misconceived in public discourse. Rational decision makers work out the best action to take on the basis of their preference and their beliefs about the expected actions and desires of others. A minimum definition of rationality requires a few assumptions. Each chooser is assumed to have complete and transitive preferences. Completeness requires that a rational individual can state preferences or indifferences between pairs of choices. In this course, preference is denoted as a greater than sign, indifference as approximated. Transitivity allows choosers to coherently define their interests. For choices X, Y, and Z, if X is preferred to Y, and y is preferred to z, or y is preferred to z, then x is preferred to z. The assumption of rationality is a starting point for constructing theories. The rationality condition is a theorist view of how people so select actions given their preference. It says nothing about the content of those preferences. Institutional relations, uh, international relations theory vary in their assumptions about rational actors' ultimate goals. So we need to ask ourselves, is there a national interest? Many approaches to international relations claim, uh, pursue and, uh, claim states pursue a national interest. They disagree about the content of the national interest and whether it may vary from state to state. For example, realism and power, neorealism and survival, liberalism and prosperity, power transition theory and control over rules of international interaction. Arrow's impossibility theorem suggests a solution to this agreement among theories. A national interest is not attainable most times. With three or more alternative options, it is impossible to fairly consider all preferences and combine, combine them into one, into a single policy directive. Universal domain means that individuals are free to determine their own policy preferences and priority order. Social transitivity. Individuals must have coherent preferences relative to three or more alternative, yet individually transitive preference can be socially intransitive. The assumption of single peak preferences solves the social intransitivity problem for single or unidimensional issues. 
The problem persists for multi-dimensional issues or issues involving policy trade-offs. Pareto improvement means a fair rule should make all better off at least or at least as well off as status quo preferences. A rule that makes some better off at the expense of others or make all worse off is Pareto inferior. Independence of irrelevant alternatives means a rule of pre preference aggregation should be immune from the introduction of irrelevant alternatives that can alter preference ordering. Except for dictatorship, no rule guarantees correspondence of individual preferences and social outcomes. Alternative approaches, neorealism. Neorealism is introduced by Kenneth Waltz in 1979. It amends Hans Morgenthau's 1948 realism, which assumes state's highest goal was to increase power. Neorealism makes four assumptions. First, international politics is anarchic. There is no supranational authority that can enforce agreements between states so that only self-interest can. States as rational unitary entities are the central actors in international politics. States seek to maximize their security above all else and they consider only they they consider other factors only after security is assured. States seek to increase their power so long as doing so does not place their security at risk. Neorealism suggests states maximize security rather than power. They are concerned with their relative gains in their competition with other states. Neorealists see the world as naturally in a state of war. They are skeptical about the prospects of long-term cooperation between states. Neorealism makes three key claims about international politics. First, a balance of power between states is stabilizing. Imbalance of power is destabilizing and leads to war. A probability of victory greater than 0.5 is necessary, but not sufficient condition for war. A bipolar international system in which all states are associated in two blocks, each led by a dominant power, reduces uncertainty and is more predictable and more stable than a multipolar world. Alliances are short-lived and trade relations must be balanced. Alternative approaches, liberalism. It draws attention to the frequency of international cooperation. Structural hierarchy is the organizing principle of international politics. A hegemonic state, which is an overwhelming dominant power, can enforce agreements and norms of contact, conduct and maintain peace and stability. Norms, broad, norms which are broadly respected patterns of conduct and shared values matter. Regimes are sets of international laws, rules, and organizations designed to promote coordination. Liberalism and neo -real, uh, liberalism and neo realism focus on different variables. Power distributions are not as important as shared interests. Regimes promote cooperation regardless of asymmetries and relative gains or power. International law is a serious constraint on states' actions. Liberalism takes a broader, long-term, strategic view of state behavior than neo realism. Alternative approach is constructivism. This approach focuses on whether state identities, preference, and objectives come from. It does not regard action in the international arena as strategic. Neorealism and liberalism instead assume state objectives and believe state interactions are strategic. Individual preferences and identity are formed or altered by legitimation, role redefinition, reflection. Leaders legitimize themselves by ret uh, rhetorically adhering to international norms of conduct such as human rights. They initially adopt a course of action for strategic reasons. International pressures force leaders to actually abide by norms and they agree to. Eventually, they engage in reflection and role definition by internalizing norms of conduct. Their sense of self and subjective view of their interests are altered through this socialization process. Empirical evaluations of constructivism's conjectures have been lacking. Constructivists have tended to select cases based on how the dependent variable turned out rather than drawing cases at random to see whether their independent variables, norms, persuasion, or pressure, produce the predictive effect of altered values or improved behavior. 
Efforts to evaluate constructivism in a manner consistent with the scientific method have not found much support. Rational actor models and large sample statistical analyses, Koenig, 2007, Sheriff, 2010, highlight selection effects and contradict case studies that support constructivism.